it might be good. Uh -huh. yeah, how are you? Thomas, first of all, happy birthday to you. And I got only one question. Uh, what do you expect from this game tonight? Yeah, thank you, first of all. And I expect the game to be very intense. Uh, Boy, point by point, uh, Berlin is a very organized team. We have to find solutions in, in uh, our service block defense to control uh, their fast offense. And of course, the, the motor of the game, it means our side out needs to be a, in a good enough level to, to play to win. Tough game. Thank you and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Всем добрый вечер! Наконец-то мы опять собрались здесь! На нашей самой любимой, самой жаркой, самой горячей, самой яркой волейбольной арене! Не так много времени осталось, эта арена будет одной из всех, которые примут матчи чемпионата мира по волейболу среди мужских команд. Ну а сегодня у нас Лига Чемпионов и самые пунктуальные болельщики уже здесь, уже на своих местах, друзья. У нас просьба, как всегда, только одна. В самой первой секунде мы начинаем заряжать, начинаем топить, начинаем поливать, начинаем делать все то, что поможет нашей команде победить сегодняшних соперников, которые приехали к нам из страны Германии. Также стоит отметить и напомнить, что сегодня и завтра сразу две игры с этим соперником мы играем здесь в одинаковое время в 19.30, то есть буквально через несколько минут мы начинаем принципиальный матч за походом.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2022 CEV Champions League men. You have tuned into a massively important match, this Pool D battle, the first of two consecutive matches in consecutive days between the Berlin Recycling Volleys and Zenit St. Petersburg. Live from Russia, my name is Rob St. Clair. Thanks for tuning in live on the CEV YouTube channel and on Eurovolley.tv. The Champions League fourth round is coming to a thrilling conclusion this week. We wrapped up the women's side yesterday with some unbelievable battles there, all sorts of drama with which eight teams are going to advance to the quarterfinals. And by the end of the day tomorrow, we will know the same for the men. This two-match series right here between the Berlin Recycling Volleys and St. St. Petersburg are going to have a lot to do with the Champions League quarterfinal picture. These two teams were supposed to face off in Berlin several weeks ago, had to be postponed. And now we get a nice, heavy, concentrated dosage of great European volleyball two days in a row in St. Petersburg. A lot to get to between these two teams. I, there's so much to talk about, I hardly know where to start. moment as we get to know the starting lineups of these two teams. that time, ladies and gentlemen, the playing of the CEV Champions League anthem, then we will learn who the two coaches have chosen to start this match for the first of this great two-match series between St. St. Petersburg and the Berlin Recycling Volleys.
Look there, Coach Tomas Somelvua of Finland, who's been with St. Petersburg for years now, since their inception in 2017, along with the Russian national team. It was uh, Somelvua's birthday yesterday, so happy birthday to him. Our coach Cedric Einard of the Berlin Recycling Volleys, the Frenchman is in charge of the German side this time, adding to their increasing international flavor. A nice bouquet of flowers for Samelvoa for his birthday. Happy birthday to Tomas. Not to be distracted by that, though. He's got a match to win. It is a big one. Before we meet our teams, we'll meet our two officials. Mr. Simone Santi of Italy will be up on the stand. Mr. Jolt Mezofi of Hungary down on the floor assisting him. Now it is time to meet the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Number three, Ruben Schott gets the started outside hitter. Jeff Jendrick, Nehemiah Moat, the American and the Australian in the middles. No surprise there. Sergei Grandkin, the Russian legend, Olympic gold medalist, played 10 years at Dinamo Moscow. He's been in Berlin for four years now. Starting setter and the captain, number six in black and orange. The other outside hitter is Timothy Carl, like we expected. Ben Patch at the opposite, and Santiago Denani, the Argentinian Olympic bronze medalist at the Libero. That is the starting seven for the Berlin Recycling Volleys, just about what we expected. They've got a lot of options for outside hitters on the bench. Past that, not a ton of depth for Berlin, so I expect to see mostly this lineup throughout this match and throughout this two-match series. And for Zenit St. Petersburg. Ivan Yakovlev, the great middle blocker. Very interesting. Igor Kolodinsky gets the start at the center position. The 39-year-old, number seven in white. Pashitsky in the middle. Kliuka at the outside. Voronkov, the other outside hitter. The great Zhenia Grabenikov, dressed as a libero, but so is Tine Ernaut. And it looks to be that he will be the starting libero initially for Zenit St. Petersburg. That is a very interesting choice with Ivan Podrebinkin at the opposite, so no Viktor Politaev initially either. Wow, I am very surprised by a couple of these St. Petersburg lineup wrinkles. I'm not sure if these guys are unavailable due to injury or what the deal is, but a lot to follow there with those lineup choices. There is Igor Kliuka, and if Viktor Politaev is un unable to play in this match, he will be an even more vital, important part of this ESP offense. You see him there, number three in black and orange. The only German in the starting lineup for this Berlin Recycling Volleys team. It is a huge super match of the week here in the CEV Champions League, and it starts off with a Berlin service error and a point to Zenit St. Petersburg. Live from St. Petersburg in the first of a two-match series today and tomorrow. My name is Rob St. Clair. Thanks for tuning in live on Eurovolley.tv and the CEV YouTube channel. ZSP in white on your left, Berlin in black and orange on your right. Really good pass right there. Jendrick in the middle. Did he get the fingertips of the block? No, it doesn't look like it. So a hitting error for the young American. Jeff Jendrick on the gap set, missed it out of bounds, and it's 2 nothing. Excuse me, that may have been Nehemiah Moth in the middle, number five. Yes, it was. Ah! 
Good repeat set that right there. Grand Kim going right back to Moth after the first error. And he puts it away in the middle. And that is a very interesting matchup that I'm looking forward to seeing. Ooh, wow, that one right between Pashinsky's arms. <laughs> the kick is good. These two teams match up in the middle extremely well. A Jendrick and Moat, big physical younger players against Yakovlev and Pashitsky at CSP. Kliuka through the block and down. And Patch and Jendrick just a split second too late on the press of the block there for Berlin. Good delivery from Igor Kolodinsky. 39 years of age, former very high level beach player since moving back indoors. Moved back indoors maybe six or eight years ago. His first year in St. Petersburg. One handed set to Grantkin. Really nice dig there. And can't be sent over. That's four contacts against Berlin. And I believe it is Jenny or Grabenikov. Yes, it is. Number eight in blue. The very best libero in the world. It would be crazy not to start him at libero for St. Petersburg if he is healthy and immediately Grabenikov making a difference there in the defensive end as we've seen him do so many times in club and for the French national team including a gold medal in the Olympics this summer. Kolodinsky again. Good pass there by Jenner. The middle blocker he gets fed by Grantkin and he'll be able to be covered. What a set there from Grantkin. No block up and Timothy Carl with the perfect start for his offensive day for the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Outstanding delivery from the Russian legend, Sergei Grandkin. Yep, Podre Binkin completely jumped on the middle. And a one-on-none opportunity for Timothy Carl. And uh, you're going to win a lot of those points if you have no blocks in front of you as a world-class wing attack. Good serve there from Patch with a perfect pass by Grabenikov. Podre Binkin on the left side in rotation one, missed it out of bounds. Ivan Podrebinkin, number 14 in white and blue, 28 years of age, two meters tall, the backup opposite for St. Petersburg. And that match that they lost to Novi Sad without the availability of Victor Politaio, Podrebinkin was not good, and they're going to need him to perform here if they can't have Politaio available. Good pass there from Veronka. Podrebinkin then again dug by Danani. Kliuka power tipped on the right side down the line and right in the corner. Perfectly located by number 18 in white and blue. It looked like a pretty good transition opportunity there for Grandkin, maybe to Jendrick on the back one, but sent over with two hands by Kliuka. Perfectly located. Zenit St. Petersburg it is out of rotation one. That one tricky rotation where the opposite and the outside hitters switch wings for that one play. Hatch out of the back row with a really good deep cross court swing. That is a great sign for Berlin if Patch can find a way to score in somewhat out of system situations against a very big block in front of them. That is such a high contact point. Incredible athlete. That Patch, two meters and three, 27 years of age. The American who spent a decent amount of time in big tournaments on the American national team but was not selected to go to the Olympics in Tokyo. Here's Paschitsky, 34 years of age, 2 meters and 5, has played all around the world, including in France and in Poland, but has been in his native Russia for several years now. Good put away there by Ruben Schott, the only German in the Berlin starting lineup. Sharp cross court inside the block and down. Really good set there from Grand Kin again, pulling the middle blocker away and giving Shot a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Voronkov off the block and deflects out of bounds. And that is a mismatch that setter Igor Kolodinsky will be looking to exploit. Either Kliuka or Voronkov against Sergei Grand Kin. His national team teammate, his countryman, and a, a legend. But Grand King gives up a lot in the blocking phase. As great of a setter as he is, both Vronkov and Kaliuka have size and athleticism mismatches against him. Free ball opportunity here for ZSP. Rubenikov, Kolodinsky, Yakovlev missed it out of bounds. Wow, what a missed opportunity there. Not good connection at all. And 
interesting choice by Coach Shemelbo to start Igor Kolodinsky and leave Igor Kobzar on the bench. That ball set a little bit higher than Yakovlev was ready for, or the timing not quite there. So Berlin, with a pretty big break right there. They're back within one, six thirty seven. Two-point lead once again here for ZSP after the service error. Eight serving six here in set number one of this best three out of five set match. 25 points needed to win each set, but you must win by two. If we get to a fifth tie-breaking set, it'll be, it'll be played only to 15. Here's Voronkov, the 26-year-old. He's been big for ZSP and sort of a backup role throughout the season. Patch, what a dig by Kliuka. Kliuka, high hands, kept alive by Carl. Good transition opportunity here. Mote in the middle is kept alive. Kliuka again, high flat off the fingertips to block down the line and to flex out of the reach of any Berlin defenders. That is a world-class swing right there. And a world-class defensive play. That's a really impressive grab from Igor Kliuka position four. This right here. Right off the high fingertips of Ruben shot and out of play. It's a perfect swing. Voronkov again. Cuts that one short. Mote has to pass that ball. Patch on the left side, not to be denied this time. Ben Patch has been absolutely outstanding this year for Berlin in domestic competition, but how is he going to fare against the biggest blocking team he'll have seen this season by far? A top-level Russian team is a different beast than all of the inferior teams in Germany that Berlin's been beating up on all year. Not a good serve right there from Shot in the CSP lead. Is two. Three, excuse me, 10 7. Yakov Lev, the ZSP captain, has a very nasty little knuckling float serve. Never mind, goes with the hybrid this time. And misses it short at the top tape. That hybrid serve has really become prevalent in the men's game these last couple years. A lot of different ways to do it. You can toss it with two hands and hit it hit it like a top spinner. You can do the opposite. I've just seen Matej Biniak have a lot of success with that. And Jakob Yakov left going for the same thing. Pudra Beacon out of the back row. What a dig by Nehemiah Moten. And swiped off the block and out of bounds. Timothy Carl. What a dig by the middle blocker. My goodness. Hodra Binkin unloaded on that ball. And look at this. Yeah, perfectly done. Tim Carl swiping off the block of Kolodinsky and out of play. And we might have a video challenge on this. Okay, this is going to be an interesting call. What I believe that Samelvo of Zane St. Petersburg is looking at is a block touch, a.k.a. who touched the ball last? And that's been the thing about that swipe off the block and out of bounds play is a lot of the time the offensive player who actually initiates the joust ends up being the one who touches the ball last, despite how it may appear. So that might be what we're looking at in the challenge replay system. And sometimes these are difficult plays to call. So we will take our time on this one. To explain the challenge system really quickly, both teams get two replay challenges per set but if you win your challenge you keep it so you can effectively challenge infinitely as long as you keep getting them right and right there let's see if we can see who touched the ball last well it clearly touched the block Kolodinsky. i don't think that's the question the question is who touched it last and the point will stay with berlin with some argument from zinnick st petersburg so an unsuccessful challenge there they have one remaining for the set it was a hard place to call, and especially a hard place to overturn. That might be what happened there. So Mote after that beautiful, beautiful dig back to serve. Podre Binkin this time off the high hands of the block. And deflects long enough to not be able to run, be run down by shot. Good swing there from Podra Beacon in response after getting dug down the line last time. It's 11 9s in St. Petersburg with Kolodinsky back in serve. Carl, oh my goodness, what a set by Grandkin again. That's the second time already that he has completely pulled the block. 
Yep, look at that. Jeff Gender completely taking Butcher Binkin out of the play. And Carl crushed straight to the floor about three meters. That is a bomb. And all the credit there to Sergey Grandkin again. What a set choice. ZSP's got to block the better, block more discipline than that. Kaliuka on the right side. So casual, crazy high contact point right there. Great pass from Grubenikov of a very tough serve. And Kaliuka finds a small seam between the two blockers. No defense there in the dead center of the court. ZSP gets out of rotation one the first time of asking. Missed connection there. Grant can try to fire it into Jendrick from well off the net and either underset or not well timed or something, but this is uncharacteristic. Oh yeah, that never had a chance. I don't think that ball ever got high enough for Jendrick. And a swing and a miss. Extends the St. Petersburg lead. We've got a very dangerous server. Rotation four received here for Berlin with Grantkin in the front court. Repeat set to Jendrick, dug by Grabenikov, but it's going to go out of play. Voronkov can't pursue it legally. And I'm not surprised at all to see the repeat set there from Sergei Grankin. That's an aspect of setters that will sometimes appear in opposing scouting reports if they have a strong tendency to go right back to a hitter to play after they've been blocked or made an error. And especially they're like a misconnection. If, if Grankin evaluated that set to be his fault, then he's definitely going to go right back to him to fix it. That ball missed out of bounds by Pashitsky. Cross body didn't find the sideline. So Berlin back within one. Both teams trying to get their middles involved early here, but ZSP uncharacteristically not connecting all that well. We've seen an error by both Pashitsky and Yakovlev already. Maybe the chemistry with their setter Kolodinsky isn't quite as well developed. Way out of system chance here coming from Podre Binkin, and he reaches over the net plus touches the net to play that ball, and we are tied at 13. Yep, net violation, definitely the right call there. You see his body fully into the bottom of the net. That might be an ace serve unless Kaluka can run it down. Yes, he can. Ooh, good reset there. ZSP will have a chance out of system. Carl out of the back row on the left side. What a great transition. Piece of adjustment work right there from the Berlin Recycling Volley. That's incredible. Ruben Schott had to step way to the inside to defend that Voronkov tip shot. He was totally out of the offense. So you see Carl there, who had just served, shifts over to attack out of position five not something you see every day by any means and he puts it away off the block and out of bounds that's a beautiful adjustment play and Berlin takes the lead to force Samovolo into a timeout let's listen into the sidelines Back to serve again out of the timeout. 14 13 Berlin is going after it. Vronkov down the line, keeps it alive. Podrebinkin down the line, wrist away, and I think he missed it out of bounds just wide. Yes, he did. Wow, very interesting. Berlin putting on some service pressure. They're making some things happen in transition, and that time forcing the hitting error. Uncharacteristic number of hitting errors here early on for St. St. Petersburg. Repeat set to Podre Binkin and right on the end line. That is an outstanding swing in response. Yeah, against the one-on-one -on -one with Shot, the slightly smaller blocker. You would expect a high-level opposite to put that ball away every time. That is a really good swing. 
hatch. Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous to be able to hit the ball down that sharp out of the back row. Unbelievable. Watch this again. Perfect pass from Shot and absolutely exploded on down the line. No chance for Pashitsky to make that defensive play. That's an incredible swing from Ben Patch and a great sign for Berlin that he can hit that angle. Yakovlev off the foot of Patch, I believe, and out of play. And Ivan Yakovlev, who really has risen to the top of the world rankings in terms of blocking middle blockers, but he's really a weapon attacking as well. So dynamic, great long arms. Padre Binkin going for the sideline again, missed it out of bounds this time from the service line. Berlin's, li Berlin's lead, excuse me, is two. Pudra Binkin out of the back row. That's a really good swing. Quick delivery from Kolodinsky. He's able to buy him some space down the line between the outside of the blocker and the antenna. Watch this again. Yeah, I love looking at it from the baseline camera there. Way too much space left by shot between his outside arm and the antenna. And Pudra Binkin took advantage. Nothing Tanani could do to make that play. One point game. Tight pass there. Grankin fools the block, but... I think Yakov got a piece of that one, and it falls on the Berlin side to tie us up at 17 all. Watch this again. Grankin's a front court player. Oh, no, no, he's not. Grankin just served, so he could not go up and touch that ball. Which is why he pulled his hands away. And smart recognition from Yakov to go up and at least touch the ball. Back row attack. What a run there. Timothy Carl comes flying in out of the pipe. And a beautiful choice by Grantkin again. Really separates the ZSP blockers. Look at this. Look at the way they're moving laterally. Yakov has to, has to jump to his left to follow the approach path in Nehemiah mode. And Kolodinsky can try and jump to the inside, but nothing he can do to stop Carl there. That's a beautiful piece of offense. And he might have a challenge here. I think the only thing I could think of would be a three-meter line violation against Carl. Let's see if he stepped on the line as he jumped to attack that ball. I didn't see that in real time. Oh, he did. Look at that. Tomas Somelvolo, beautiful eyes. He recognizes that violation, and ZSP is going to take that point. It's going to be 18-17 in favor of the host, says Timothy Carl, the back row attacker, stepped on the three-meter line as he jumped to hit that ball. Yeah, sure enough. Wow, you can see it there on the replay. Great use of the challenge by Samelvolo. ZSP takes the lead. Until then, of course. Shot back to serve in a very competitive set number one here. 18 all. Working on Voronkov. Really well passed. Yakovlev off of the block of Nehemiah Mote and out of bounds. Wow, look how high these guys are in the air. That's unbelievable. The top of the net is uh, 8 feet or I think 2 meters 43. It's the same height as the crossbar in football or soccer. These guys are getting their jersey numbers up above that height. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Carl deflected by the block and out of bounds. Really good high flat swing by number nine in black and orange. Perfect. Perfectly located. Carl has no intention of hitting the ball into the court on that play. All he wants is the high part of the block and for it to deflect long enough so that ZSP can't run it down defensively. That's what high level offense is all about these days. You've got to use the block to your advantage. Now the backup setter, Matt West. The American out of Pepperdine University has played all over Europe. Comes in to serve and play some defense for the middle blocker. Conservative serve there. Dumped over on the second contact. Carl for the lead, tipped over, read easily by Grabenikov. Kliuka, oh my goodness, the angle. 
Done by Carl, but can't be run down by Krimkin. That that transition angle combined with his little footwork as Kuyuka had is absolutely insane. I hope we get another look at this. Yeah, look at that. That's ridiculous. He's like three or four meters inside the antenna because that's all his footwork would allow him to get out there. He's still able to hit that shot, get high enough to hit that. That's nuts. And now a one-for-one -one setter substitution, kind of like I expected to see to start this match, in all honesty. Igor Kobzar, number four in white and blue, in for Igor Kolodinsky to serve, and I assume that he will stay in as the full-time setter. It's 20 to 19, sitting St. Petersburg. Tight battle here late in the first. Kobzar misses that serve out of bounds. No, interesting. Kobzar actually goes back to the bench. So in just as a service sub. Very interesting lineup choices from Sonovola. Kuyuka not able to be kept alive by Danani off the block touch, and ZSP leads by one once again. Good high swing that time from Igor Kuyuka on the right side. He's going to be their number one option in rotation one just about every time. Don't be at all surprised if he gets every right side ball that he can to get St. Petersburg out of that rotation. Patch out of the back row, blocked and can't be covered. Voronkov and Pashitsky shut the door, and it's a two-point lead for St. Petersburg. The first block of the set for either team at a crucial time. Yeah, that's not that good of a swing from Patch. He brought that down way too much right in between both the arms of Voronkov. And timeout Berlin trailing by two late in the first. Don't give too much space on the line. First thing, okay, only one ball. Then, on KP, on KP, opposite front or back, follow the center. Okay, let's play, let's play middle and front, follow the center. Okay, let's go. Coming from Carl out of the timeout, and somehow he finds a little bit of space in between the blockers to get Berlin a crucial point inside out. And they're very much still alive, back within one here. Yeah, just a tiny bit of separation between Pashitsky and Podrybinkin. Carl saw it and exploited it, now he's back to serve. Good rip down the line, working on Veronkos. Right over the top of the block. Oh my goodness, Fedor Voronkov, what a swing. That is awesome for number 11 in white, who's played an unexpectedly high number of minutes this year. They brought in Tine Earnout this offseason to really be that full-time starting outside hitter alongside Igor Kuyuka, but he hasn't had the season that zsp has been looking for, so Voronkov has seen a lot more action. Also, injuries have had a lot to do with that. Patch out of the back row, perfectly located, deep cross court about a meter inside of the end line and the sideline in position one. Nice shot there from number 13 in black and orange. It's a one-point game once again. We talked about the mismatch against Grantkin, the blocker. Let's see if Kolodinski goes at it. Now this time, Podre Binkin on the right side and a smart tip straight down the line. At the middle blocker, Jeff Jendrick playing defense. No libero on the floor there in that rotation, and really, really well recognized by Podrobinka, number 14 in white. And it is set point, Zenit St. Petersburg. Podrobinka serving 24 22. He missed it just barely out of bounds, not by much. 
but I don't think we'll see a challenge here. So now Berlin needing a point on their serve to force extra points. Can Sergei Grankin extend yeah. this first set? Good pass. Kavuka out of the back row. Beautiful dig by Grankin. Yakovlev missed it short into the top tape. I mean, Nehemiah Mote was there, but I don't think he got a piece of that on the block. And we are tied at 24. Watch this again. Yo, and that's not even in the top tape. That's in the middle of the net at best. Yakovlev trying to go for a crazy angle, and the defensive play that Sergei Grant made earlier in that rally has paid a huge dividend for the Berlin Recycling Volleys, and they've extended their first set. We are going to extra points after this St. Petersburg timeout. for all. That set point graphic is not correct. He must win by two. Berlin very much still alive, but now it is set point presenting St. Petersburg after the service error. But now they're going to have to do it on their serve. They had a great opportunity before that timeout to win this first set inside out, which statistically is significantly easier than scoring on serve. Let's see if Voronkov can be the hero. Good pass. Patch dug by Grabenikov. Kliuka has a swing for the set, and he puts it away deep cross court. Zhenyar Grabenikov screams in delight. What an offensive play by number eight in blue. The best libero in the world coming up huge to get his team a transition swing, and ZSP wins the first set. Igor Kliuka has put the home side on the board. Oh, man. Look at Grabenikov just fearlessly flying into the sharp cross court, taking that ball off the chest. Back with you live on the CEV YouTube channel and Eurovolley.tv. 
for the 2022 Men's CDV Champions League. My name is Rob St. Clair. You're turning into the Super Match of the Week between the Berlin Recycling Volleys and St. Petersburg, the first of a two-match series in two consecutive days in Russia between these two great European teams. And there is a lot going on elsewhere around the Champions League right now. A lot of scoreboard watching going on as we are looking to decide the quarterfinalists. By the end of the day tomorrow, we will know which eight teams will advance to the quarterfinal round. St. Petersburg took the first set here at home, 26-24 on extra points with a kind of surprising starting lineup. Igor Kolodinsky got the start at the center position. Ivan Podrabinkin at the opposite. And it looks like that's what Samuel Veloa has continued to go with in this set here for the home side. Perfect pass there. Patch is roofed by Kliuka. Zenit St. Petersburg on the board first. Here in the second set. What a big time stuff block that is. Got the glove there as well. But that was all the left hand of big number 18 in white and blue. And he knew it right away. Voronkov takes a rip at that one. Missed it out of bounds. So what is Berlin going to try and do here in this second set to be able to win some points on serve? They're pretty good in transition defense, but no blocks and no aces in the first set. They've got to find a way to slow Zenit St. Petersburg down, and that is an outstanding choice by the veteran setter, Igor Kolodinsky, to dump that ball to the floor on the second contact. Yeah, two hands, beautiful throw down there, pretty well disguised. Kolodinsky, a longtime beach player. Actually, his resume includes two Champions League gold medals, but that was all the way back in 2003 and 2004, if you can believe it. He's still doing it at this high of a level almost 20 years later. Patch, good response, crushed cross court on the right side. It's Ben Patch's fourth season in Berlin, came over from Brigham Young University in the United States. Played one year in Italy, now his fourth year in Berlin. He has signed a long-term contract to stay in Berlin for the foreseeable future. Good block touch there by Gendron. Patch out of the back row, off the block, and he's blocked again. This time Kolodinsky comes over, the third man in that triple block. And he shuts the door on Ben Patch. And this is not a bad swing. Not at all a bad swing. Patch targets the weakest of the three blockers. Keeps the ball higher, higher. Could, could have definitely hit that ball higher than he did. But just unlucky that there was no deep coverage back there for Berlin. And St. Petersburg leads 3-2. That ball served out of bounds and the floater down the line by Kolodinsky. Timothy Carl, the 26-year-old Frenchman, in his second season in Berlin. It's been a huge piece for them. Even though not a guy that a lot of people have heard of in terms of national team time. That time, power tip to the floor on the left side. Podrabink in the opposite on the left that time, and that one rotation only takes advantage of the slight mismatch one-on-one -on -one between him and Sergei Kenkin. And you come back to the service line. Patch crushed on the right side. That is a beautiful, beautiful high hard swing by number 13 in black and orange. And a quick delivery from Grandkin had the block half a step late. Left a big enough seam between Voronkov and Pashitsky for Patch to find four apiece for number four, Jeff Jendrick at the service line. Perfect pass by Grabenikov. What else is new? Out of system swing coming here from Patch. He's kept alive by Kliuka. Voronkov tipped into the block, recycled. Pudra Binkin deep, dug by Carl. Patch can track it down. 
but a net violation committed by Voronkov on the attempted throwdown. And Berlin's going to walk away with that point. Really good defense from the Berlin recycling volleys right there. Good blocking, shutting down some weird tip opportunities, keeping themselves alive in the play. A good cross-court dig there. And then a net violation by Voronkov gives Berlin the point, and he admits to it right away. It's 5 serving for Berlin. Back one to Pashitsky. What a great choice there by Kolodinsky. The Berlin block was not ready for that play. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Mote nowhere to be found that time. <laughs> Neither was shot. Pashitsky back to serve. The 34-year-old in his second year in St. Petersburg. Shot rolled into the block, and he is rejected. Podrebinkin shuts the door that time, and I think that all Shot was trying to do was get that reset off the block and covered on his side, but that went too straight down to be kept off the floor. And uh, this is a different level of block <laughs> than Berlin's used to seeing. If that shot works in the Bundesliga, probably not going to work here. Patch tipped out of the back row, and speaking of... Shots that might work in the Bundesliga that are not going to work here. Ivan Yakovlev swats that tip to the floor. Yeah, get that out of my house, says number nine, white and blue. Two blocks in a row presenting St. Petersburg. Seven serving five. Shaw challenges the block, and it's three blocks in a row. Wow, Yakovlev again with Pashitsky, or excuse me, Podrebinkin there as well. And that is a gigantic, classic Russian double block. This is one of the strengths that I was talking about for ZSP coming into this matchup on the European Volleyball Show, the pre-match show that we do on the CB YouTube channel for every featured match of the week. We dug into this matchup. I was curious to see how Berlin would play against another really top-level European team. Berlin has not been challenged really much this year at all. And this is a bigger block, of, of an elite Russian-level block is bigger and more intimidating than anything Berlin has seen all season long. And we see it here with three blocks and three consecutive points. Berlin trails by three, calls a timeout. is stuff blocked again. What a press. Ivan Podrebinkin and four blocks in a row for St. Petersburg. That one the most authoritative of them all. An absolute brick wall by number 14 in white and blue. That was massive. I don't know what shot Ruben Schott was trying to hit. Uh, no pun intended there. Oh yeah, you see that little late left-handed drop. Yakovlev was there as well. There was never going to be any cross court on that play. And another stuff block. Unbelievable. Samuel Tuya into the match four shot and immediately rejected by Podrebikin again. Five blocks in a row. That's crazy. A 6 nothing run for Zinni St. Petersburg. One side out and then five consecutive stuff blocks. This time by Ivan Yakovlev. That is a ridiculous run, run from the home side. Now two timeouts in a row for Berlin in this one rotation. They are feeling the momentum slipping away. serving five. Berlin has got to get out of this rotation. They're dug by, down the line is Patch. Grandkin. Tuya tipped into the block and he's stuffed again. Oh my goodness. Six blocks in a row for St. Petersburg. This time just a good disciplined press to not get used by the tip shot from Samuel Tuya. 
But this is insane. One of the great blocking runs that I've ever seen, and it's not over yet. Really nice play there by Podrobinkin and Yakovlev to not get used by that shot. It's 11 to 5. Oh my goodness. And it's St. Petersburg is really flexing their size right now. Patch blocked again. Run down by Tuya on the cover. Free ball opportunity here for St. Petersburg. Yakovlev stuffed by Mote one on one. What a block by number five in black and orange. And a crucial response for Berlin to have absolutely any chance in this set. They probably needed to have that point right there. And they get it on a stuffed block against a free ball. Wow, as improbable as it gets. Look at that move. Absolutely dive into his left, taking the power shot away from Yakovlev. Berlin is finally out of that rotation and it's 6 to 11. Voronkov down the line, looked to have, missed about, to have missed it out of bounds. He wants a block touch. I personally didn't see one. There is Viktor Politaya, dressed, but not in action right now. I'm very surprised by that. We'll see if we can see him in some capacity later on in the match. Good rip by Grankin down the line. Voronkov again, covered off the block by Grabenikov. Podrebinkin swatted, but still kept alive somehow, and ended up being a hittable ball, but Podrebinkin missed it out of bounds. And Berlin responds, really impressive mental fortitude after getting stuff blocked six times in a row. They've gone on a three-point run of their own. It's 11 to eight, and I believe we'll have a ZSP timeout right here. Yes, we will. Just as I thought this set might be over in the early stages after that blocking run that St. Petersburg went on. Berlin is right back into this thing and ZSP needs a side out right here. Yakovlev and they've got one, denting the floorboards. You know, I would assume that being the captain of St. Petersburg and all, he would have some amount of contact with the, the brass at the top of the organization and they wouldn't look very kindly upon property damage and uh, that time denting the floor on the home court for St. Petersburg. They might have to send Yakovlev a bill for that later. That's her missed out of bounds by Podre being given a three-point game once again. Ace serve. Wow, Samuel Etuya. Fresh off the bench. 35-year-old Frenchman with the first ace of the match for, I believe, either team, if I'm not mistaken. Perfectly located right there for number 12 in black and orange, right into the scene between two receivers. It is a two-point game. Kashitsky, or excuse me, Podre Binkin, the opposite, down the line, off the fingertips of the block, and couldn't be kept alive by Donati. Good looking rip right there off the high right hand of Timothy Carl and out of play. 14 serving 10. Pretty good crowd on hand here in St. Petersburg getting into it. Wow, what a rip that is. Carl, sharp cross court. Very good quick delivery from Sergey Grankin from well off the net. And a fearless swing for number nine in black and orange. Making a gigantic Russian block, but pretty much invisible. Two-point game, 
Oh, a stuff block right there. Ben Patch shuts down Kluyuka, plus a little bit of a stare down. <laughs> Interesting. Wow, what a right-handed press by number 13 in black and orange. Returning the favor for what Kluyuka did to him at the beginning of the set. It is a one-point game once again. What a comeback here from Berlin after going down by six. Setter dump again, Kolodinsky with two hands. And now he's looking through the net with some words for the German side. <laughs> Getting a little interesting here in the last week of the Champions League fourth round. I love to see it. These guys understand the importance of this match. They really want this win. It's fun to watch. 14 serving 12, Jakob Lev at the line. That might be an ace serve right there. Yes, it is. Called right on the end line. That is perfect. And the youngest Yakovlev fan sporting an extremely small number nine jersey in the crowd in delight of that service performance. I mean, that's just nasty. Look at the way that ball's spinning, or rather, like, not spinning at all. It's just so weird the way he's able to hit that hybrid serve. To have it not like have that traditional downward top spin, but still dip down far enough to catch the end line. That ball is in. Wow, look at that on the challenge. Barely catches a piece of the back of the end line. You can't do it any better than that for Ivan Yakovlev. Let's see if he can do it again. Three point lead. 15 12. More traditional floater that time handled really nicely and destroyed by Jeff Jendrick in the middle. Cross body thumped right to the sideline. Jeff Jendrick, two meters and eight, 26 years of age. Came out of Loyola University Chicago to the Berlin Recycling Volleys, then played one year in Poland. Now he is back in Berlin where he started. Kind of a theme of this Berlin team, actually. Ruben Schott had, this is his third stint with Berlin. Nehemiah Mote, his second stint with Berlin. Same with Jendrik. Berlin, one of the great European clubs of all time. Their highest Champions League finish, a bronze medal in 2015. Misconnection there, and Carl looks to have gotten away with it. Yes, he has. Unbelievable. I think he tipped that ball with his left hand standing on the floor. And he finds some space through the block. That's kind of a break for Berlin right there. Watch this again. <laughs> yeah, Budderbeekin pulled his hands away, not wanting to get used. And I can't blame him for that. He was defending against getting tooled, but instead had to go right down his chest. Bodrovinkin on the left side, slowed down by the block. Patch in transition. Good dig by Kolodinsky, but a free ball here for Berlin. Patch again through the block. Somehow scooped up by Grabenikov, but couldn't be kept alive. And Kliuka immediately runs over to Sanova while talking about a potential challenge. He is pointing at somebody. I don't know what it is that he wants. Let's see, we're gonna have some conversations about this. And Samelvo now talking to our down official about a challenge. And there is a challenge called. I don't know what for. Maybe a three meter line violation against Patch. We will see. That is the review for a attack line fault. That should be pretty definitive. But I don't know what it is exactly that they're looking at here. For now, Berlin wins that point. It's 15-16. Oh, a net touch against Grandkin. Oh my goodness, that is so close. No net touch is the call. Wow, you... That... I don't know about that. That is about as close of a net touch challenge as I have ever seen, and it's not 
super definitive on that replay, but it looked to me like the net may have moved ever so slightly because of Grandkin's elbow. But no net touch will remain the call. Berlin will keep that point. That is about as close as it gets in terms of net touch challenges. Incredible body contortion from Sergey Grandkin. And it's 15 16. And now it's tied. Unbelievable. Ace serve. But now we might have another challenge. He, the ZSP thinks this is out of bounds. And they actually have the point on the board for now. But I thought for sure that Timothy Carl caught the sideline there. Our second challenge in as many points. Let's see if we've got a tie game or a two point St. Petersburg lead. I would think this would be pretty definitive as well. Oh my goodness, I've never seen Two challenges, it is two challenges in a row be closer than that. That is as close as it can possibly get on a sideline or endline challenge. That ball is in by a fraction of a millimeter. Wow, I don't blame St. Petersburg for thinking that was out. But Berlin wins two consecutive incredibly close challenges and we are tied, 16 all. Kliuka slowed down by the block. Patch is able to keep it alive. Free ball opportunity here for St. Petersburg. Kliuka on the right side, not to be denied this time. Incredible sequence here. St. Petersburg in this set had six blocks in a row. But Berlin has brought it all the way back, including two ace serves. But now Kliuka is going to be their guy. When St. Petersburg needs a point in a high ball situation, that is who they're going to, especially there in rotation one. Now it's 17-16. Now it might be 18-16. Danani runs out of room, and it's an ace serve. We've seen some pretty incredible plays from the liberos in relation to the video boards at the side of the court over the years, including from the great Shinya Grabenikov, of course. But... Denani this time just barely runs out of space to track that ball down. Luke with the ace serve. It's 18 16. That ball missed just out of bounds. This is anybody's game, which I cannot believe is the case after that run, that blocking run that St. Petersburg went on early in this set. Incredible mental strength from Berlin to not just roll over after that particular run. They pushed back and made the set competitive once again immediately and have chipped away at the lead ever since. Here's Jember. Stuff block straight down. Nehemiah Mote one-on-one -on -one with the right hand. Unbelievable. Pashitsky is shut down. Watch this again. A straight commit. One-on-one. -on -one. And a brick wall by the Australian, number five in black and orange. And it is a tie game at 18 all. Unbelievable. Voronkov hammered crossbody down the line to perhaps restore some order for St. Petersburg. But this is anybody's game. What a match we have here. And if you didn't think this was enough, these two teams are going to go right back at it again tomorrow, regardless of the result of this match. Crazy. We're getting so spoiled with all the great volleyball this week. Ace serve. Oh my goodness. Dmitry Pashitsky with the 5 to 5 floater just inside the end line and a crucial insurance point on the St. Petersburg serve. Look at this. That's perfect. Yeah, Tuya was way too far up in the court. He assumed that anything over his head was out of bounds. He is assumed incorrectly and it's 20 to 18. Patch out of the back row, kept alive by Kliuka. Really tight set there. Reset into the block by Podrabink and Kliuka on two. Oh my goodness, Igor Kliuka. On the second contact comes flying in out of the back row. And we've seen this play for a couple years now, popularized by Irvin Ingepet, copied by several. 
but now that the middle back outside hitter is a legitimate option as both a second setter and a pipe attacker, um, Berlin kind of expected him to jump and set that ball, and he did not. It's 21 to 18. Patch again. What a take by Kolodinsky. Audrey Binkin, sharp cross court right on the sideline, and St. Petersburg leads by four. Wow, what a run. Two incredible transition kills plus an ace, and the lead all of a sudden for the home side is up to four at 22-18. This is an outstanding swing by Yvonne Podrebinkin against three blockers. And I believe a double substitution here for Berlin, bringing in the backup setter and opposite to keep the setter in the backcourt and the opposite in the front. We'll double check that, but I believe we've got Matt West and Marek Satola in right now. Tuya chopped down the line. He gets Berlin out of the rotation. Yes, Matt West, number 15 in black and orange. And Marek Sotola, number 17, the left-handed opposite out of Czechia. Gets them that side out, and now I think they'll both go immediately back to the bench. It's a really good swing there from Tuya down the line. No, Sotola back to serve. Patch back in for West, but there's no recognized setter on the court right now for Berlin. Crushed, oh my goodness. Ivan Yakovlev, what a delivery from Kolodinsky. Completely pulled the block away. Yeah, Mote thought that ball was going over the net. He went to jump and try and get it. Kolodinsky grabbed it with one hand and the bounce of the day so far. Ivan Yakovlev, unbelievable. To give this team a 23-19 lead. That is as good as any swing you will see anywhere on the planet. 23-19. Grandkin back into set for Berlin. Tuya on the right side. Missed it out of bounds down the line. And set points coming up. Wow, what a roller coaster of a set we've had here. First, we're going to have a challenge by Coach Einhardt of Berlin. Looking for a block touch down the line, I believe. Because I think that ball was pretty clearly out of bounds wide. But it could have caught the fingertips of the block. We will see. touch no touch down the line yes pretty clear on that replay there that's a great uh, a worthy challenge from Berlin but definitely the correct call no touch by Voronkov and it is set point Zenit St. Petersburg looking to go up two sets to none they'll be 24-19 they pulled away late here in the second tough pass from Danani rescued by Grandkin but uh, reaching over the net violation called against St. Petersburg as Yakovlev went and touched that ball while it was still fully on the Berlin side. And yes, that's a great call. Heck of a play by Grandkin to go up and grab that. So one set point save from Berlin, but now ZSP with four opportunities to side out and get, go up two sets to none. Voronkov deep cross court off of Tuya and into the spectators, and that is it. 25-20, an unbelievable run from St. Petersburg with six blocks in a row early. Berlin came all the way back and even took a couple late one-point leads. But a really impressive run from St. Petersburg late. They went the second set, 25-20. to They lead this extremely important Pool D fourth round Champions League match, two sets to none. Elsewhere around the Champions League right now, because this is a huge day of matches, and a lot of these matches affect other, other teams and other pools. So you see this one, St. Petersburg leads Berlin. We'll look at the stats really quick. Eight blocks in that set alone for St. Petersburg is absolutely insane. Plus three aces. So elsewhere around the Champions League right now, Zirapan Kasa Ankara traveled to Dinamo Moscow. In a match that Dinamo Moscow didn't have to win. They had already won their pool. 
but Moscow absolutely buries Zirafan Tasa. They beat them three sets to none. And the Turkish side finishes fourth round play at three and three. Still very much alive at advancing as a second place team in that pool. But that, that result is good news for both of these teams here in St. Petersburg. Both Berlin and CSP are happy to see that back. Look there at some highlights from her second set that was absolutely full of highlights. Yeah, just to finish up really quickly what's going on elsewhere around the Champions League. Dinamo Moscow beats Sierra Pancasa on for a three sets to none. Yashevsky leads Friedrich Safin one set to none. They're midway through the second. Nak Rusolari took the first set over Hebar Pizarczyk in Bulgaria, 25-23. That's a very meaningful match in Pool A. Later on today, a huge one between Lube Chivadinova and Zaksa Kedrius in Kozla in Italy. Trentino taking on Khan in France. Trentino's got to win that to secure themselves a spot. And more matches coming tomorrow, including a rematch of this one right here. The Berlin Recycling Volleys traveling to St. Petersburg to take on ZSP in a two-match series to decide who is going to win Pool D. St. Petersburg, the home side, and trailing Berlin by a match in the pool right now, looking great, up two sets to none. Ruben shot back into the lineup for Berlin. Set number three, ready to get underway. Forces the overpass right away. And Patch missed it out of bounds on the right side. So St. Petersburg on the board first here in the third. My name is Rob St. Clair. I want to once again thank you for watching on the CBD YouTube channel and on Eurovolley.tv. Our feature match of the week among several great ones. This one has delivered so far. Yakovlev serving. A serve again. His second of the match. That just a nasty hybrid serve. Getting the better of both Carl and Donani down the line. Just look at the way he does this. The mechanics of it are so fascinating. Tosses it high with two hands and no spin. Goes up and hits it with a not full, not full top spin, not, not, not the traditional like downward spinning top spin you're used to seeing, just that weird, nasty knuckling action. And so hard to handle that. That time he misses it short, but he'll take one ace to one error and one trip at the line every day of the week. Yakovlev, the St. Petersburg captain in his third season with the team. Good set there from Kolodinsky to Pashitsky in the middle, and Mote trying to track it down runs out of room. Kolodinsky's done, done a really nice job at the starting center position for St. Petersburg after a couple misconnections to the middle early on. They've ironed that out, and he's also played really good defense and scored a couple points on block and center attack. Rush cross court right there. Team at the car. Oh, my goodness. That is a bomb. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Absolute no doubter. And if his countryman, Jenny or Grabenikov, both Frenchmen, if Grabenikov's unwilling to stand in there and absorb that ball, then uh, that tells you a lot right there. Patch back to serve, trailing by one. Berlin looking to extend this match. But even if they can't, they'll be right back in action tomorrow. Voronkov out of the back row. What a set choice by Kolodinsky. I love, love seeing these teams run that quick pipe attack. There's an in-system option out of the back row. We haven't seen it that much from either team. Nice timing here and the spacing, that the mismatches that creates against the opposing block are just so appetizing. Like, look at that. There's no block up for Berlin against Veronkov. 
perfect pass. Jendrick has stuffed one on one. Wow, Dmitry Pashitsky with a commit and a left handed drop to shut down Jeff Jendrick. And it's 5 to 2, St. Petersburg here in the third. Yeah, check this out on the replay. This is awesome. Boom, full commit, late left handed drop to take the power shot away. That is an awesome move by number 19 in white. Tough pass, Carl able to run it down, but shuttle send over a free ball. Peronkov is roofed by Grankin. Oh my goodness, Sergei Grankin. Out of nowhere. The 36-year-old with a gigantic stuff block, and this team kind of needed it right there to get out of that rotation. Oh yeah, look at the left hand for number six in orange. Incredible move. Not like Grankin hasn't been here before. He has seen it all. Ball served way out of bounds, and ZSP leads by three once again. Sharp cross court, oh my goodness. Almost knocks Veronka up to the floor. He actually keeps it alive briefly, but nobody there to dig it out of the middle of the net. Watch this again. That's an incredible rip by Ruben Schott. The only German in the starting lineup for the Berlin Recycling Volleys, 27 years of age. That was a beauty. Here's Gendron. Podrebinkin, deep cross court, and it looked like he missed it out of bounds, yes. Berlin calling for it immediately. No touch off the block and wide of the sideline. It's a one-point ball game. Yeah, maybe slightly less than perfect hand contact right there. Putting Rubikin a bit underneath the ball. Jendrick serving at 5-6. Not this time. Wow, attack errors. Interesting stat right there. 11 hitting errors for St. Petersburg compared to only five for Berlin. That does not include spikes that were blocked. Podre Binkin forces the overpass. Great opportunity here for St. Petersburg. Misconnection to the pipe, but Grantin's out of the play. Patch out of system, off the block and out of bounds. Missed opportunity there for St. Petersburg for sure. The connection not quite there from Kolodinsky to the pipe for Kriuka. Kriuka did the smart thing by making Grankin handle the first ball and forcing an out of system offensive look from Berlin. But that is what you pay a high level opposite like Ben Patch to do for you right there. Score. Score in tough situations against three big blockers. And he did it right there. Six serving seven. out of the middle. Nehemiah Mote just bombs away off the 31, that gap said. Look at this from baseline camera. You can see the lateral movement. See that? Yakov left with that big shuffle to his right in the last second to front that quick attack, but Grantin saw it, gave him that ball in a position where he could turn it to his right inside the clock. Too many service errors here for Berlin lately. And Jakob who already has an ace in this set, back to serve with a two-point lead. Keeps that one in play, handled really nicely by Janani. Patch on the right side, off the block of Kliuka, and out of play. Really good delivery there from Grandkin, generated the one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know why I'm even bothering to say really good delivery from Sergey Grandkin. That goes without saying. The man's got two Olympic medals, including a gold from 2012. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my goodness, what an angle. Igor Kliuka, that is ridiculous. There are so few players on the planet, or even debatably of all time, who can hit that shot. Look at that, he's passing that ball, he's all the way into position six. He's attacking that well inside the left antenna. Like, so that, and to be able to hit that ankle still inside the block, right on the sideline, that is superhuman stuff from Igor Kriyuka. Unbelievable. Oh, oh my goodness. What a set. What a set from Sergei Grandkin from four meters away. Quick tempo and perfectly to Jeff Gender. These, these players are just so good, I can't even, I don't even have words for them. That set's amazing. Pashitsky, nowhere to be found. Incredible setup, just incredible. Good work by Jender being available as well. Here's Patch. Another misconnection to the pipe, this time set too far behind Voronkov, and it falls to the floor on the St. Petersburg side. We're tied up at 10. Very interesting. I've already seen two of those in this set. It's cost St. Petersburg two points. I wonder how long Kolodinsky's leash is going to be or if Tomas Semelvo chooses to bring Kobzar in off the bench. Got a system swing coming here for Podre Binkin, and he's rejected by the triple block, and Berlin has taken the lead. Timothy Carl celebrating as if he got most of that one. Yeah, it was Carl, and he, <laughs> I think he thought about pulling his hands away. And there is a look at Coach Our great work by our camera crew, because that is the, that's the question right now for St. Petersburg. Is that guy going to come in as a setter replacement? Doesn't need to this time, as we're tied up at 11 after the service error, but St. Petersburg has done on serve what they've needed to do to win this match so far, including here in the third, but in side out offense, they've been less than perfect. And Sometimes that's due to some discontinuities, misconnections between setter and attackers. 11 apiece, here's Kuyuka. Carl into the antenna down the line, immediately out of bounds. And a point to St. Petersburg on their serve. Yep, definitely the right call there. Carl went cross body trying to go down the line. Definitely touched the antenna before any St. Petersburg players. Kliuka again. Patch missed it out of bounds out of the back row. Definitely not good hand contact there. Grant can ask him about a net violation, but I think the net was moving because of the serve. St. Petersburg back up by two. Yeah, that ball is straight over the block, no touch. No topspin on that ball whatsoever. I'm out Berlin, going by two here in the third and two sets to none. Timeout, Igor Kuyuka serving again. Berlin's got to get him off the line. Tough pass there. And Timothy Carl somehow finds a way. I have no idea how he was able to fit that ball through the block. Let's look. Yeah, that, that it was the ball that hit the tape, not any of the players. So an incredibly smart way out of system choice there for number nine in orange. And Berlin's back within one. That looks like an ace serve to me. Yes, it is. Called out by the line judge initially, but overruled immediately by the up official, and we are tied. I thought that was an absolute bullet right on the sideline in position five. Go! 
They serve again. Timothy Carl, two in a row, going after Veronka down the line. And those are two absolute laser beams. You can't do it much better than that. Watch this again. Oh, yeah, that ball's going the exact same place, right on the sideline. That's going to be just perfect. Veronkov with no choice but to take a stab at it and shanks it into the stands. That's a better pass. Veronkov tipped over the top. Patch makes the play. Veronkov again turns it down the line and missed it out of bounds. What a defensive play. Ben Patch on the pancake. Keeps his team alive, and it pays off. 15-13 Berlin off the serving heroics and Timothy Carl have taken the lead here in the third. Oh, absolutely. That ball is clearly fully off the floor. Patch got his entire hand underneath that thing. And Voronkov couldn't take advantage on the free ball. Timeout, St. Petersburg. <laughs> Look at the runs. Three-point run from St. Petersburg responded immediately with a four-point run for Berlin. A very streaky match so far. It's been really fun to watch. Teams finding tiny little areas of advantage on their serve, and they're exploiting them to go on these little miniature runs. Right now, it's Carl serving down the line, working on Veronkov. Let's see if he can keep this one in play out of the timeout. Yes, he can. This time handled well by Grabenikov. Bocherbinkin off the block and out of bounds. Crucial sight out there for St. Petersburg. serving 15. Anybody's game. Tough swing from Schott. Kept alive. Voronkov initiates the net play and he gets away with it. Through the block and down to the Berlin side. Interesting. These players are doing a remarkably good job at managing those extremely out of system situations with the ball coming from like beyond the end line. We saw Carl get away with one. That one that time it was Veronka. Shaw missed it out of bounds, but he wants a block touch, and it looks like he got it. Yes, deflected off the fingertips of the St. Petersburg block. And no denial from the St. Petersburg players. Yep, right off the fingertips of Pudra Beacon. Nice look at it there on the replay. Well, then leads narrowly by one. Jendrick back to serve. He's got a dangerous float serve at times. This time dangerous to his own team. Sixteen all. Pivotal sequences here coming up in the third set. St. Petersburg leads two sets to none. Berlin trying to stay alive, stay atop this pool. Stuff block there that is not a lift call, but eventually tapped to the floor by Voronkov. Right off the top of the net, and St. Petersburg takes the lead. Started off with a very good serve. Shot way out of system, was blocked by Yakovlev, but couldn't be kept alive for long. 17 16 until the service error. Drabinkin run down off the block touch by Carl. Transition opportunity here. Patch on the right side for the lead, and he puts it away 18 17. That is such a good defensive transition play by the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Just gorgeous. Great block touch by Schott. Carl in the right position to run it down. But Yakovlev on the back one inside out gets CSP back level. A little underset by Kolodinsky. Yakovlev uh, wants the ball pretty much at the top of the antenna, but he 
finds a way regardless. It's 18 apiece. Show it on the right side off the block and out of bounds. That might have caught Voronkov in the or Yakov, excuse me, in the forehead. Maybe. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> No, uh, Yakovlev barely even a factor in that block. Just jumped an inch off the ground and put his left arm up, and that's what deflected it out of bounds. 1918 Berlin, perfect pass there. Kuyuka bombs away on the one-on-one. -on -one. Yakovlev already has two aces in this match. Not this time. That ball tossed a little too low. And he missed it long. Berlin is looking to extend this match. Can they pull away here late in the third? Nehemiah Mote, the Australian middle blocker, has been outstanding. Back to serve. Liuka again with another crazy angle, but this time just barely out of bounds. And a huge insurance point for Berlin on their serve. Let's see. Yeah, definitely no touch by the block. And Liuka couldn't, all he kind of could do was snap over the top of that ball, wasn't totally able to follow through, and maybe that's why he ran out of space by the sideline. Timeout St. Petersburg, trailing late here by two in the third. Andre Binkin missed wildly out of bounds out of the back row, but a net violation against Berlin. Unbelievable. What a break for Zinning St. Petersburg. That was a horrible miss hit. Yeah, definitely way over the block. And I don't know if I see a net touch there. And Petersburg is going to keep that point. 20 serving 21. Kolodinsky, the veteran setter, back at the line. Patch on the right side is absolutely clamped by Igor Kliuka. Oh my goodness, what a time for one of those. Igor Kliuka gets that left arm out to the line and shuts down Ben Patch with authority. And we are tied, 21 all. What a time for a clutch stuff block like that. Oh yeah, beautiful move by number 18 in white with Pachinski there as well. It's 21 apiece. Carl tipped into the block to get it reset. Patch again, over the block down the line. And he puts it away. Wow, the trust that Sergey Grankin has to go right back to Ben Patch after getting stuffed the previous play. Such high-level setting and true confidence in your teammates. That's an outstanding shot by Ben Patch. That's a really good swing. Now he has an opportunity to atone for that previous error by getting a point on serve. Can he put this one in play? What on earth was that? Not even close to a good toss. Kliuka calmly off the block and out of bounds. That is, uh... <laughs> I don't really know what to call that. I think that toss, like, slipped out of Patch's hands and he had to platform it over the net from the service line. I see that every day. Yeah, wow. 
I wonder if that's even a legal serve. We contacted it with both hands on his platform. Huh. Didn't matter. St. Petersburg took the point. And now Ben Patch has gone to the sidelines. Maybe something seized up on him there. Rushed by Jendrick out of the middle. But that's huge. No Ben Patch on the floor right now for the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Marek Sotola in as the backup opposite. So something happened to Ben Patch on that service attempt, and he had to go to the bench immediately. Can Berlin get this done in a tight third set without their starting opposite on the floor? Good pass there. Bronkov tipped over the top. Jedrick makes the play, but a net violation against the Berlin block again. Too many of those here late. They've taken some of their own opportunities away from themselves by touching the net on the block. It's 23 all. Anybody's game here in the third, but a lot on the line. Shaw finds some space in between the blockers and puts it away through a seam. And now Berlin's going to have a set point on their serve. 24-23. Watch side out right there. Good pass by Carl. A big time seam at the block that Shot saw from a mile away. Set point Berlin, 24-23. And Matt West, the backup setter, on to serve. Got a very good jump spinner if he chooses to go after it aggressively, but I expect him to just keep this one in play. Yes, he does, and it's a shank pass by Veronka. Good reset, though. And detonated sharp cross court. Wow, what a recovery play by Fedor Veronkov. A horrible first pass, but a really smart choice to tip that ball into the block, get it reset back on his side and increase their likelihood of getting a point in transition. He ends up putting it away the second opportunity. So West, the service sub, back to the bench. And now it's a tie game. Extra points once again, just like we saw in the first. Got to win by two. It's 24 all. Good serve there from Podre Binkin right on the net. Not terminated, though, by Yakovlev. But Shot is able to do so. Missed opportunity there from Zenit St. Petersburg. That ball was right on top of the net. I expect Yakovlev to hammer that to the floor, but kind of waffled and kept alive by Donati. And Shot ends up with the point off the block on the left side. And now another set point for Berlin. Still no Ben Patch. Marek Sotola, the backup opposite, in the front court as a blocker right now, number 17 in black and orange. That ball crushed by Voronkov off of shot and off blocker defense, out of play, and we are still going. 25 all. Served just barely out of bounds. So another set point to Berlin. How are they going to manufacture a point on their serve? They've gotten a couple, a couple ace serves, mostly from Timothy Carl. That's where most of the service pressures come. A couple stuff blocks, but it's really been transition defense. Can they dig a ball right here on this point? Shot serving once again for the set. Oh, they almost get away with an ace off the tape. Kliuka off the block is covered. CSP scrambling. Podrebinkin dug by shot. Great opportunity here. Carl for the set, and that is it. Through the block inside, sharp cross court. And the Berlin recycling volleys, without their starting opposite on the floor, have survived in the third. They are on the board here in this best of five set match. 27 25. They're on the board in the third set. All started with a pretty lucky break there off the tape. But Timothy Carl was the man to put it away. Huge celebration for the Berlin sidelines as this match is not over yet. More volleyball coming your way. Set number four. St. Petersburg still leads two sets to one at home. But can Berlin force it to five? We'll find out in just a minute. First serve set number four coming your way. Don't go anywhere.
set number four of chapter one of Berlin at St. Petersburg. Coming your way live here on the European Volleyball YouTube channel and Eurovolley.tv. My name is Rob St. Clair. Thanks very much for tuning in. Berlin survived a very tight battle in the third and took it 27-25 to extend this match to four sets. Question is, can Ben Patch come back into the starting lineup? He went to the bench there late. Dealing with some sort of injury, trying to jog it off right now, but it looks like he is going to start the fourth set. Timothy Carl has been outstanding at the outside for Berlin so far, a big reason why they're still alive in this match. In case you can't get enough of this particular matchup, you're in luck, because these two teams will play again tomorrow, same time, same place. Petersburg will start off the set serving in white and blue on the right side of your screen. Oh, what a set by Grandkin. Kept alive somehow by Grabenikov. To the middle again, and this time Mote not to be denied. You had to think that Grandkin was going to fire, find a way to fire it in there after Mote was dug miraculously the first time. Sure enough, Berlin is on the board first here in the fourth. Tight pass, somehow dug by Kliuka off the block touch. And Kliuka tipped over the top, no, that ball's still alive. Until it is called to the floor before the second contact of Berlin. And no real argument from the recycling volleys. I think you can see again what happened here. That was kind of a crazy play from the get-go. All the way to Carl on the outside, and he's stuffed by Kolodinsky. Pashitsky there as well. It rolled off the tape for a little bit, but landed inbounds on the Berlin side. Petersburg leads two to one. Yeah, Jinder got a chance to play that. He wasn't sure if it was going to roll out of bounds or not. Two to one, Yakov left serving. Been very aggressive lately, and it's paid off with two aces, but a couple too many errors here lately. That is the balance of high level men's one and one. You've got to serve tough. You, there's just no other way. You can't give easy serves in just so you can avoid errors because the other team's offense is just gonna run it down your throat. You've gotta put pressure on. Sometimes that comes at a cost of making some errors. Patch back into the match with a good serve there. That off the tape, not the antenna, and put away down the line by Ivan Kodrovinkin off of Denani and out of play. Connection there on the pipe. Three ball opportunity here for St. Petersburg and crushed in the middle by Dmitry Pashitsky. No mistake about that one. Missed opportunity there for Berlin off a pretty good pass. Connection to shot on the pop, the pipe, excuse me, not quite there. Results in an easy free ball for St. Petersburg and they lead by two. Patch out of the back row. Rush down the line. Great side for Berlin. And they're able to get that patch back. Taking high hard swings like that. Watch this again. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Really high contact point. Deep into the court. Exactly what you want to see. In a small scene between two blockers. Carl back to serve. Podre Binkin. What a dig by Denani, but couldn't be controlled. It's out of bounds on the St. Petersburg side. And the home team out of rotation one immediately.
I don't blame Jendrick for jumping with the middle there. Pudro Beacon has not been all that effective on the left side. All he's worried about is stopping the middle and stopping Kuyuka on the right. It's a smart setting from Kolodinsky to utilize the one-on-one. -on -one. That serve missed short by Kuyuka. Ivor Kuyuka has done some ridiculous things on the highlight reel already in this match. He might have seen a clip from Volleyball Nations League last summer in the bubble in Italy when he hit arguably the greatest sharp cross-court shot of all time. And none of the ones from today have been quite as good as that one, but they have been close. Good play there by Patch on the pancake. That's off the foot. That's still alive. Shot off the block kept alive by Kolodinsky. This is a crazy rally. Voronkov kept alive. Back to St. Petersburg again. Voronkov again finally through the block and down to Berlin. But it's incredible defense in that rally. A pancake play by Ben Patch. I think a ball straight off the foot of Jen Jeff Jendrick in position five. But eventually St. Petersburg walks away with the point. Voronkov's like, man, what do I got to do again to score against these guys? Serving for Pachinski back to the service line. He's has an ace in this set, in this match, excuse me. Having some success going five to five. That's where he goes again. Tough pass by Shaw. He'll have an out-of-system swing. And he puts it away. Sharp cross court inside a double block off Voronkov and out of play. That is an outstanding recovery by number three in black and orange. Yeah, such a good whip there. Not a great pass, low and inside. Had to be platform set. He atones immediately. Voronkov has had a lot of success with that man, tipping a lot of balls through the block and down on the Berlin side. They've got to be a little more disciplined with their hands and penetrating over the net right away. Yeah, you can see there, Mote's entire body is well off the net. And even if he doesn't get that ball kind of unluckily right between his arms, that's still going to fall on his side. Is this going to be an ace serve? Yes, it is. Short runs out of room. Can't track it down by the Berlin bench. And an ace serve, I believe, for Porto Beacon. Yes, it was. It's a ball. A good serve. Uh, well off of Danani's midline, but a ball that I expect him to be able to handle as the world-class libero that he is. Zenit St. Petersburg, founded in 2017, have not been around as a club for very long, only their second opportunity in the CEB Champions League. Looking to beat Berlin at home today and maybe again tomorrow. Still very much alive to win Pool D and to advance and be a significant factor in the quarterfinals of this tournament and beyond. Overpass force there, and no mistake made that time by Jakob Lev. Rush to the floor, cross body. Good serving from Pudra Beacon. Generates the overpass. And there, again, the youngest Yakov left fan in the house with that number nine jersey. Grant can a backcourt player, not legally able to go up and block on that play, so all he can do is stand there and put his hands up. Nine serving five. Patch, blocked, covered. Fired quickly into the middle. What a set by Grandkin again. I could not get enough of watching this, this legendary setter just fire balls into the middle from anywhere and really fast. And you can see Mote there. He's, he knows exactly what to expect. He knows that no ball is too far off the net for Grandkin to set to the middle. <laughs> He's up and available. He puts it away. Six serving nine. Good pass there from Kuyuka. Oh my goodness, what a stuff block. <laughs> Mayamote with the commit again. Look at that. Straight commit. 
Patch was there as well. There is a, you can tell very clearly what, how much respect Berlin has for the St. Petersburg middle attack, especially Yakovlev, the two point game. Yakovlev way out of system here. Carl off the block and out of bounds and it's a one point game. That was Voronkov, excuse me, that was slowed down by the block. He wanted the reset, but instead it was slowed down and easily handled by Donani for Berlin. And then too fast of a ball to the outside. St. Petersburg blocked to get a very good touch. One point game, 8-9. Petersburg three-point run answered by a Berlin three-point run, the same as we've seen throughout this match. Voronkov again! Roofed by Patch, and we are tied. Mote there as well. What a stuff block by number 13 in black and orange, way over the net. That is textbook blocking fundamentals. I hope we get another look at this. This is exactly how you want to teach blocking. Yep, perfect. One move, didn't drift to the outside, got over the net immediately. Perfect move from Ben Patch in the tie game. Jakob crushed out of the middle, wow. Timothy Carl had just begun to pull off the net and he, all of a sudden, there was a green and yellow Mikasa volleyball right in his face. Surprise. <laughs> Check it out, yeah, that, wow. Uh, did not expect that to happen so fast. St. Petersburg leads 10-9. And two sets to one. Oh my goodness, what a swing. Timote Carl, you've got to be kidding me with that. How did he find that angle inside of three gigantic Russian blockers? That's insane. Watch this again. Like that is a good three-man block, and Grabenikov sitting at the three-meter line. That is a world-class, absolutely world-class swing for number nine for Berlin. Incredible. Podre Binkin high through the block and down on the Berlin side. And Ivan Podre Binkin in this match has been really good. I was surprised to see him start it and not Viktor Politaev, unless there's a health issue that we don't know about. Because Podre Binkin, when St. Petersburg lost that confusing match to Novi Sad, Podre Binkin was quite frankly not good at all he's been excellent in this match shank pass barely kept alive by grant well you got stuffed covered somehow basically a free ball here for berlin jendrick tipped out in the middle and it's to the floor miscommunication there from the st petersburg defenders and we are tired that was a crazy back and forth rally I, that may have even been four contacts, but Berlin takes the point anyway. As that play not made defensively by Jakob Lev or Podrobica. Everybody just gathered around the campfire. Watching that ball fall to the floor. 11 apiece. That is such a good set there from Kolodinsky. Patch runs out of room. Off the defense and out of play deep. Pashitsky gets credit with the kill, and St. Petersburg leads by one once again. What a just competitive, really, really tight competitive game we've had the entire, the entire match. Even that second set that St. Petersburg was able to pull away and went 25-20, Berlin went down big early after a huge blocking run and came back and tied it up. Patch shut down by Kliuka with Pashitsky there as well. Those two have really gone at each other one-on-one -on -one in this match, and it has been a blast to watch. Look at that, straight down, perfect. Patch's favorite shot is that high seam, and when the seam gets closed, which all the credit goes to Pashitsky for, uh, you sometimes see blocks like that, and 13 blocks on the match for St. Petersburg through three and a half sets, that's a big number. Dumped over by Grantin, kept alive, but Kurbenikov can't change directions and run it down. First one of those we've seen for number six in black and orange. And a nice time for it. So well disguised. Both these setters are tremendously good at disguising that setter dump until the last second.
serving 13. Carl, not a very good toss that time. He's had some success hammering down the line to Verón Cogger, position five. Tried to cut that one short and not particularly close, so it's 14-12. Another good set from Grantkin to the middle. Grobenikov. Veronkov off the block and out of bounds. Patch can't run it down. Nice set that time from the best Libero on the planet, Shania Grabenikov. And his team leads by three. Grabenikov, his first season playing in Russia. His, his father is Russian, which is why the, the name Grabenikov fits right in playing in the Russian league. But the French Libero, the Olympic gold medalist has played all around the world in club, including in Germany for Friedrichshafen, as well as three of the great teams in Italy before coming to Russia this year. That is a double contact called against Timothy Carl on the overhead set. Came out of his hands a little too dirty for our up officials liking and a four-point ball game. St. Petersburg trying to pull away and win this match in four. It's 16 to 12 and Berlin needs timeout. Let's go. Hey, guys, it's not the bomb, but we'll let's go. Yeah, fix the reception, but then let's do again. Big option when opposite is back. I want big option. Move the line even more. And I repeat, Ruby and uh, and uh, team one against one on the opposite. I don't care. We play in defense, but we have to be on the good zone. Okay. Die, guys, die, die, die. Die, let's go to the step. Can St. Petersburg keep their foot on the gas to win this match in four and effectively create a dead tie scenario at the top of this pool D heading into tomorrow's rematch? That is what is on the line. Patch out of the back row off a perfect pass off the block of Aronkov and out of play. And a good response by Berlin out of the timeout. Yeah, perfect swing there by Ben Patch. A lot of line to swing out against the one-on-one. -on -one. Took advantage of that move that Aronkov made, reaching way to the inside. Now Jendrick back to serve. Aronkov crushed cross court right in between Jendrick's legs. Fedor Voronkov has really kind of carried the St. Petersburg offense. Not as much so in this match, but throughout this season as he's been just about the only constant in the lineup for him. They had a little COVID issue with their team. They had some injuries to both Politaev and Igor Kliuka. As well as Tina Ernau, one of their other options, an outside hitter. So Fedor Voronkov has been extremely important. That ball destroyed by Ruben Short out of the pipe. Off of Pashitsky and out of play. Well, it might have caught him in the chest or even maybe higher than that. Let's see if we can take a look at it. It's a Tim Carl, excuse me, on the pipe. Gets the kill that time. 14 17. Grant Kennedy to bring his team back into this in his home country. Good rip by Yakovlev out the middle, but he missed it out of bounds just wide. Pretty close, and I think he's looking at Smelvolo telling him not to challenge. He knows he missed that ball just barely wide of the sideline. Berlin's position one, it's a two point game. This is far from over. It would be huge. Berlin could force this to five, even if they didn't fully make the match come back. St. Petersburg leading in most statistical categories, but doubling up Berlin in terms of number of fair offensive errors. That doesn't include doesn't include times blocked. So that's a factor for what's keeping Berlin in this match very much alive. 18-15, Pudger beat him back to serve. Takes Grantkin out of play off the tape. Shot on the right side into the block and cover but mishandled by Carl. However, Berlin still has an opportunity. Podre Binkan out of the back row. 
gets the St. Petersburg lead back up to four. And there you see two of the normal starters, or at least projected starters earlier in the year for St. Petersburg. Victor Politaev and Tine Brunow, the Slovenian, dressed as a libero right now. So there's no chance you'll see him in any start of, sort of attacking role. And he's not certainly not going to play over Grabenikov. Overpass forced here. St. Petersburg for a five-point lead. Podrobikin again. Thought he got the end line, but called initially out of bounds. He might have a challenge on this. That was very close. Yes, we do have a challenge. So Melvillo wants to take a look at if this ball caught a piece of either, end, either line, sideline or end line, if not both. Yes, it did. Wow, it doesn't get much better than that. That ball is perfect. Perfectly inbounds right on the back edge of the end line. And Ivan Potrebinkin continuing his excellent match. I've been very impressed with number 14 in white and blue. The backup opposite for St. Petersburg. He's keying this service run that might be what his team needs to win this match. Even though he misses that one there. A comfortable cushion. 16 serving 20. Now all Zenny needs to do is keep their side out offense efficient. Berlin meanwhile needs to find a way to manufacture some points on their serve. Ruben Schultz. Voronkov is roofed again. This time Patch and Mote combining for a gigantic brick wall block. And that will certainly help Berlin's cause. Watch this again. Yeah, absolutely. Man, Ben Patch is so far across the net with these blocking moves. It's exactly what you want to see from a guy that big and that athletic. A serve. Oh, my goodness. Ruben Shaw, untouched, perfectly clean a serve right down the line on the sideline in position five. Watch this. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Nothing Voronkov can do about that. And now we've got a ball game again here, ladies and gentlemen. St. Petersburg, I believe, is going to call timeout. After Berlin scores two points in this service rotation. Yes, they will, and it's a two-point game. And Schultz do it again out of the timeout. Anybody's game here in the fourth. 18 serving 20. Good pass, work, or good serve working on Kuyuka. Pass well off the net. Voronkov tipped over the top. Out of system opportunity here. Patch against two big blockers. Off Kuyuka and out of play, and it's a one point game. That is awesome. Awesome opposite play from Ben Patch. Way out of system. Everybody in the gym knew the ball was going to him. Straight over the top of an extremely well-formed double block. Deep cross court. Would have been in bounds if Luka hadn't played it. And that is perfect for Berlin to get back within one. Anybody's game. Good pass there by Grabenikov. Podrebinkin blocked one-on-one -on -one by Carl. And it's the tie game at 20 apiece. Unbelievable. And that was the right set choice as well by Kolodinsky. He got the one-on-one. -on -one. Podro Binkin couldn't find his way past Timothy Carl. That is not a good swing at all. And it's 20 all. What a comeback for the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Five points in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Down 20 to 15. Another timeout for St. Petersburg. Their second and final of the set. Let's listen. Interesting, the Finnish coach, Tomas Samelvolo, has been in Russia for long enough to be able to coach his team in Russian. Of course, the coach of the Russian national team as well. Look at that run. Three-point run for St. Petersburg. Now a five-point run in 
response for Berlin. We are tied up at 20 here in the fourth. Absolutely anybody's game in a crucial situation. St. Petersburg has got to get a full three points on the board from this win to make it a dead tie at the top of this pool. Going into tomorrow and another ace serve. Oh my goodness, Ruben shot off the tape and shanked to the floor by Voronkov. Unbelievable. Berlin has been extremely clutch in this match. And I think they're a little bit out-talented at most positions, except maybe the middle and the opposite. But they have really hung in there and played phenomenally clutch volleyball when it's really mattered. That ball missed out of bounds by Podra Binkin, and the run continues for Berlin. It's 22 to 20, seven points in a row. And St. Petersburg is out of timeouts. And if Viktor Politaev were an option for St. Petersburg, he would be in the match right now. And you can see Samelvo looking to his bench. I think that's exactly what he's thinking about. First, he's going to bring in the, the replacement setter, Igor Kobzar, who's been the usual starter throughout the season. Comes in for Igor Kolodinsky, but Podrabinkin remains in at the opposite. 22-20 Berlin, an incredible turnaround. Shank pass again, and another ace serve. Ruben Schott putting the team on his back here late in the fourth set with three aces in this run alone. Unbelievable. Berlin leads 23-20, eight points in a row. It was 20 to 15. And all I said was St. Petersburg just needs to be efficient inside out, and they're gonna win this match in four. They've been trapped in this rotation for seven points. Crazy, crazy stuff. Now Berlin looking like they're going to force it to five. What an unbelievable turnaround. Shot serving again. All the confidence in the world right now. That ball tossed a little too far out in front. He misses it out of bounds, but with some well-reserved, well-deserved praise from his teammates for that performance and that run. Polodinski comes back in at the setter position for St. Petersburg. But now all Berlin has to do is side out twice and we're going five. Voronkov is the server. And he misses it short into the net and Berlin has set points here in the fourth. Uh, I can't even put words to that comeback and that run that Berlin just went on to turn this around. Absolutely stunning. Stunning performance from the Berlin recycling volleys. And now Matt West, the backup setter, coming in to serve on set point Berlin, 24-21, with a fifth set just one point away. Pashitsky, or Yakovlev, excuse me, puts it away out of the middle and one, one set point saved, so the service set will be undone for Berlin. Yeah, Jendrick was there, just too sharp of an angle for Yakovlev off his left hand and down. So now St. Petersburg needs two points on their serve to force extras. Can Yakovlev, the captain, give it to him? Keeps that one in play. Tight pass. Patch off the block and out of bounds, and that is it. Berlin with a miraculous comeback. Unbelievable. Eight points in a row. They end up taking set number four, 25-22, and we are going five. Unbelievable. This is turning in one of the match one of the matches of the entire tournament so far. And by virtue of that comeback, Berlin guarantees that no matter the outcome of this set, they will still be in first place in the pool heading into tomorrow's rematch. Both teams have secured one standings point from this match, but the win is much more important than any points. The match wins is the first is the first tiebreaker in the CDB Champions League. I'm going to try and do some quick math here because there's a chance that if Berlin wins this match, that they might win the pool straight up tonight.
Ladies and gentlemen, you have tuned in to a developing instant classic. Berlin went on an eight to nothing run from down 20 to 15 in the fourth. And now the best two words in all of volleyball, set five, live on the European Volleyball YouTube channel and Eurovolley.tv. I'm Rob St. Clair. It is my pleasure to bring you this match. And I can confirm that mathematically, if Berlin wins this quick sprint set to 15 points and therefore wins this match, they will be the champions in first place of Pool D. So that is what's on the line. Good run down and a hittable ball for Kliuka, dug by Denani. Carl rolled into the block and rejected. Berlin wants a net violation against the St. Petersburg block, and we might have a challenge looking at just that. Yes, we do, and that'll give me time to go over the math in this pool a little bit. Berlin, right now, 4-0 with 12 points. If they were to win this set, they would go to 5-0 in matches with 14 points. St. Petersburg would drop to 3-2 and two with 10 points. That means regardless, the best thing that St. Petersburg could do tomorrow is win. And a net touch is the call. Unbelievable. Yeah, clearly the forearm right there of Yakovlev into the top tape. Berlin's going to take that first point. But if Berlin wins this, 5-0, 12 points, 14 points. Even if they lose tomorrow, the best St. Petersburg could do is get to 13 points. So this is a win and in scenario for the Berlin Recycling Volleys. And they're on the board first here in the fifth. Kliuka not to be denied this time, high off the hands and out of play. But all the pressure totally on Zenit St. Petersburg after letting that fourth set totally slip away. Yakovlev caught fire briefly from the service line, but his last several attempts have all been out of bounds, and that's another one, a terrible service error on a conservative float serve way underneath the ball and out of bounds, and Berlin, lead, Berlin leads two to one. This tiebreaker set to only 15 points. You still must win by two, but every mistake, every point on serve, everything magnified just that much more when you only have 15 points to work with instead of 25. Patch serving and two serving one. And he misses that one in the top tape. Stuff blocked out of the middle. Dmitry Pashitsky shuts down Jeff Jendrick. One on one. What a play by number 19 in white and blue. St. Petersburg takes the lead. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Really nice late reach on the left hand. Good enough for the stuff block with no Berlin coverage able to be there. Kolodinsky has started the entire match at the center position. We've seen Igor Cooks are very sparing. Carl, high off the hands and out of bounds. And Timothy Carl, number nine, in black and orange. The Frenchman has been really good for Berlin in this match. Really, both their outside hitters have. Schott was definitely the hero in the fourth set with that incredible service run. The question in this matchup has been, can Berlin hang with the big boys from elsewhere around Europe? And the answer is a resounding yes. Tough pass there and a double contact against Pashitsky trying to cover himself. Low set, just swallowed whole by Jeff Jendrick on the block and Berlin takes the lead. Yeah, absolutely nowhere to go. That ball set way too low. It's four serving three. Another service error this time. Carl puts it into the top tape and we're tied up at four. Berlin with a very narrow ad advantage for the moment in the fact that they're receiving serve. But this, this guy is not the one that anybody in the world would feel comfortable sitting back there and trying to keep the serve alive. Good pass there by Denani. 
Patch down the line, missed it out of bounds, just barely out of bounds wide. And now St. Petersburg takes the lead. Good serving there from Kliuka. Let's see what he can do this time. Perfect pass there by Danani. Patch again. Slowed down by the block. Good transition opportunity here. Kliuka out of the back row. Connection not there. And able to be rescued, but that's outside the antenna for sure from the St. Petersburg side. And another missed offensive connection from Kolodinsky to the pipe for Kliuka. Connection not perfect, and it really cost St. Petersburg this time in a fifth set opportunity. You've just got to have those. Good defense there for Patch, too. That'll eventually be effectively a kill from Timothy Carl out of system on the left side. We're tied at the clock. Jendrick back to serve. Rushed down the line by Voronkov. Scooped by Patch momentarily, but underneath the net. St. Petersburg takes a one-point lead again. No Tina Earn out in this match for St. Petersburg. He's dressed as the second libero. No Victor Politaev. We haven't seen him at all. Very little Igor Kobzar. Shaw tips smartly over the fingertips of the block and to the floor on the St. Petersburg side to tie us up at six. I think that play's got to be made, especially if you're not going to put a triple block up there. Six apiece, Sergey Grantkin, the Russian legend, back in his home country for Champions League. Rolls that one short handled by Vyakovlev. Padre Binkin tipped down the line on the right side. Tradition opportunity here. Shot for the lead, and he puts it away off the fingertips of the block and out of bounds. Really good high flat swing right there for number three in orange and black. Perfectly high off the fingertips of Padre Binkin. Not a play that is an extremely high level. The lead outside hitter play and win leads seven to six. Grant can have that short jump spinner that last time. Let's see who he goes after this time. A serve! Unbelievable, what a break! Sergey Grantkin with the extremely fortunate deflection off the tape and it lands short on the St. Petersburg side and the teams will change sides as Berlin has reached eight points with a two-point lead, 8-6. And the title in Pool D on the line. If Berlin wins this fifth set, it is over. Berlin will win this pool no matter the result of tomorrow's rematch. St. Petersburg thought they had this in the bag. They led 20 to 15 and two sets to one in the fourth before one of the great runs that I've seen in recent history in the club volleyball scene. Ruben shot with eight points in a row. Berlin forced it to five and we'll have a timeout here for St. Petersburg in addition to the side change. So Melville getting desperate. Olympic Russian medalist Sergey Grant can do playing for the enemy this time in Russia. What can he do out of this timeout? Can he grab some insurance on his serve? Berlin looking really good right now, leading 8 6 in the fifth. Voronkov over the top of the block, wanted the fingertips, not called initially, but we're definitely going to have a challenge for a block touch on this. And Voronkov is confident that he caught a piece of the Berlin blockers. We will find out via the challenge system. Oh, 
elsewhere around the Champions League. Dinamo Moscow beats Europe on Casa three sets to none. Yashevsky beat Friedrich in Pool A 3-1. Nak Rusolare leads Hebar Puzarczyk in Bulgaria 2-1. Nova Sibirsk leads Maribor 1-0. Result of the challenge, no touch. Right through a seam in the block and not off the little finger of Miyamaya Mote. Definitely the right call there and it's 9-6. Berlin Recycling Volleys can smell a pool title on the road here in St. Petersburg. Can they finish it out? All the pressure on the Russian side right now. That might be an ace serve. No, Gerbenikov can run it down. But a free ball coming here. Patch for a four-point lead off the block and out of bounds. Unbelievable. The Berlin Recycling Volleys lead 10 to 6 in the fifth. Just incredible. They went down two sets to none, and now Kirill Ursov, number 10 in white and blue, comes in off the bench for Fedor Voronkov as a front court outside hitter. And now, if you're Berlin, you are licking your chops right now. You better believe that any ball possible is going to Igor Kliuk on this play. If it can't go to the middle, it's going to the pipe. 10-6 Berlin. No, Podrobinka on the right side is dug by Denani. Kept alive again by Denani. Free ball opportunity here for St. Petersburg. Podrobinka again, high flat off the block and out of bounds. Wow, the trust that Igor Kolovinsky has in his backup opposite. Ivan Podrobinka, who's played this entire match. No Viktor Politaev. Incredible amount of trust. St. Petersburg is out of that rotation. Seven serving ten. Shot on the right side is rejected. Rusov and Yakovlev are there to close the door and it is, it is far from over. St. Petersburg back within two after a huge stuff block. Their hallmark as a team and Russian Volleyball's hallmark as a lead. And rotation one, a bit of a weakness here for Berlin. Can they get out of it? Tight pass, and some calls got to be made. Back row blocker against Grandkin is the call, and St. Petersburg takes the point. Unbelievable. And we're going to have a challenge on this, it looks like. Cedric Ennard. That is, looks to be right above the plane of the net. In my opinion, that was exactly the right call made in real time. And I don't even know if this is overturnable. Unless they're looking at just a straight up net touch. Touch was the challenge. Definitely no net touch, and that to me on the replay looks like Yakovlev touched that ball totally legally as it was directly above the plane of the net. So that's a back row blocker call, ball, call against Grandkin. And it is a one point game. Nine serving ten. Timeout Berlin. All the drama you could ask for. So much on the line. If Berlin wins this match, they win the pool. If St. Petersburg wins the match, then tomorrow's rematch will determine who wins the pool. Wow, the streakiness of this match continues. A five-point run for Berlin here in the fifth, responded to by a three-point run in St. Petersburg. This has been an absolute roller coaster. What a thriller. What a thriller. Just exactly the right match for the Super Match of the Week, and we're not even done for the weekend. It's going to get even better than this. Pundra Binkin in a huge spot. Got to serve this ball in. Trailing by one. Got a system swing. Patch on the left side. Puts it away. What a crucial rip by number 13 in orange and black. Gets Berlin out of rotation one on the left side. Out of system swing. That might be a game deciding play for Ben Patch and the Berlin Recycling Volleys right there. And his celebration 
tells you that he knows how significant that was. And here is the hero from the fourth, Ruben Schott. Can he do it again? Yakovlev slowed down by a good block touch. Patch for a three-point lead dug by Podrobinkin. He'll get a swing here. Dug by Schott. Carl rejected, covered by Danani. Carl again covered by Danani. Patch crushed deep cross court and an unbelievable rally. Won by the Berlin Recycling Volleys. Incredible defense from both teams and terrific block coverage from Berlin. They're able to stay alive and eventually Ben Patch. Deep cross court gives Berlin a three point lead once again. Man, Santiago Danani was everywhere in that play, covering balls off the block. But that was the killing blow right there. That looks like we'll have another timeout sitting in St. Petersburg. This is unbelievable here in the fifth. Unbelievable. Ruben Schott, we know how dangerous he can be. We saw it in the fourth. Three-point lead. Berlin is closing in. Tight pass by Kliuka. Carl tipped into the block. Grabenikov keeps it alive. Ursov, his first swing of the match, and Kirill Ursov with a crucial, absolutely crucial swing presenting St. Petersburg cross court. I thought on that overpass that Nehemiah Mote was going to hit that ball. Instead, he chose to set it or hand pass it on the first contact, and Berlin couldn't take advantage. That is a huge swing in this fifth set. Ten serving 12. Can Berlin side out to keep the pressure on? Ursov's first serve of the match. Off the tape, barely able to be kept alive. Carl high off the hands. Another opportunity for Berlin. Patch off the block and out of bounds just barely. Shot thought about it. He thought about playing it, but it just barely missed the corner in position one on the Berlin side, and it's 13 to 10. Unbelievable drama. Oh, look at how close that was. Ooh, Shot did the right thing by holding up and not playing that ball. Now the service of Matt West, the backup setter, number 15 in orange, in once again to serve and play defense for Berlin. 13 to 10. In the fifth, Berlin. If they win two more points, they win the pool. Kuyuka tipped into the block and out of bounds. So a side out immediately for St. Petersburg to get back within two. All the pressure on the Russian side from the service line now. And Igor Kobzar, oh, we'll figure out the substitutions, but it looks like Igor Kobzar is going to come in to serve. Apparently for the middle blocker, Ivan Yakovlev, to serve and play some defense. Yes, Kobzar is in, the Olympic silver medalist, the usual starting setter for the Senate St. Petersburg team. Going with the jump spinner. And he misses it short. A terrible service error off the bench. And Berlin has match points at 14-11. The service sub is undone for St. Petersburg. And after one of the great Champions League matches I have ever seen in the fourth round stage, the Berlin Recycling Volleys are one point away from winning Pool D on their serve at 14-11 in the fifth. Ben Patch, who went to the bench briefly with a minor injury in the third set. Can he be the hero for the Germans? Match point number one. What a time it would be for his first ace of the match. Good pass by Kliuka. Kliuka is stuffed! 
No, just barely out of bounds. Oh my goodness, I thought that caught a piece of the sideline. And Maynard immediately saying, you got to fight another point. That was just barely missed out of bounds. Oh, interesting. They brought in Marek Sotola. The backup opposite is a blocking sub for Grantkin there. And oh, Maynard thought he might have won the match, but Grantkin comes back in. Match point number two. Berlin can do it inside out. Right here, Kolodinski to serve. Carl. Grandkin, Jendrick, and that is it. Unbelievable. The Berlin Recycling Volleys have come to St. Petersburg, and they have beaten Zenit St. Petersburg in five unbelievable sets. And Pool D has been decided. The Berlin Recycling Volleys at 5-0 in the group with 14 points have clinched the win in the group and a spot in the Champions League quarterfinals from down two sets to none. Unbelievable performance by the Berlin Recycling Volleys, a reverse sweep against one of the scariest teams in all of volleyball, Jeff Jendrick with the nail in the coffin out of the middle, and Sergei Grantkin has orchestrated a masterpiece for Berlin, and the celebration is on. The rematch tomorrow will not matter for the Berlin Recycling Volleys. They have won this pool in unbelievable fashion in St. Petersburg, Russia. Just a tremendous match. It has been such a treat to bring this one to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching live on the European Volleyball YouTube channel and Eurovolley.tv. There will be another rematch of this same battle between Berlin and St. Petersburg tomorrow, but Berlin can celebrate tonight as they have won Group D. Unbelievable, 15-12 in the fifth. Final scores, 24-26, 20-25, 27-25, 25-22, 15-12. A lot more drama elsewhere around the Champions League. If you want to catch every match, make sure you pick up a subscription to Eurovolley.tv as you look at the final match statistics there. Almost dead tied in points, extremely similar in attack and reception. St. Petersburg leading in blocks, but the, the service pressure late from Berlin, plus a few too many attacking and service errors from St. Petersburg. That was the difference. An incredible match for Berlin, unbelievable. So much fun. It has been a blast to bring you this match, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the competition all week long. The drawing of lots. Friday will determine our quarterfinal matchups. And then we'll move on to the knockout stage. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Rob St. Clair signing off for now. We will see you next time. for the victory today. Uh, oh, I gotta gather my thoughts. Um, 
I know we, you know, coming here to play Zenit in St. Petersburg, we know that it was going to be a tough match. And a team like them who is so big and physical and we don't always play against this level, you know. Um, and so it was a great opportunity for us and to, uh, to come and to play at this level and to play against this uh, caliber of team. And I think our, our strategy was was to not, not try to be them, but to try to remember who we are in, in tough situations that we're not all two meters 15 and we're not all jumping like crazy, but we have good volleyball players. We, we work really hard and we don't give up. And I think that's really what won for us today is, 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 our, is our stamina, our, our willingness to like keep trying. You know, we, were, we lost the first set and we were down, I think 20 to 15 in the fourth set and, and came back. So uh, yeah. That was long, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, and good yeah. luck to you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Thanks.